Charlie Giroux. My guest this week is uh, Representative Congressman Lloyd Smucker uh, of the 11th District in Pennsylvania. I just want to say thanks, Lloyd, for letting me just ask you some questions, you know, of course. Uh, that are adverse to your opinion on what's going on. I have to start with Mark, the Democrat here on the, uh, on the set. You're still thinking, I believe, about uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, decision not to call a vote to officially enter the inquiry. I, I just don't think it's a big deal. I think that uh, it's a red herring that's being put out there because it's not required by the Constitution at all. It's a question of procedure, whether the Speaker wants to hold a vote or not. As the Speaker, she can launch the official inquiry, which she has done. So it really doesn't matter. The other little issue that uh, you had mentioned in the earlier segment, uh, the, uh, the security and the privacy of witnesses. You know, there's a reason for doing that in executive session. It's because we have a president who absolutely attacks anybody that disagrees with him. He's trying to uncover the identity of the whistleblower. This is dangerous stuff. So I think the Congress has an obligation to protect the identity and go into executive session when it's important to do so. Quick question I have for you, though. Uh, the, there's this ongoing discussion emanating from the White House about how the whole impeachment trials a hoax and the Robert Mueller uh, investigation was a hoax. Well, the Senate actually took action and released a report that said, indeed, the Russians interfered and they did so to elect Trump and to defeat Hillary. Do you think that the Mueller report and the impeachment are hoaxes, as the president says? I think there was clearly uh, Russian interference in the election, and so the, we've already. The Mueller passed. report's not a hoax. Uh, we've already. Well, I supported the Mueller uh, uh, report initially. It went way beyond the initial, um, you know, what we th thought the focus was going to be. It took a lot longer than it should have. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it clearly came out with the um, uh, conclusion that there was absolutely no collusion. Um, you know, and what's unbelievable is that the Democrats have not been willing to accept that and move on. And now here, 13 months from our next election, are literally still looking for a reason to impeach the president. And by the way, just to, to respond to your, you know, the, the, what I'm asking for with Volcker, uh, with the 10 hour, is just to release the transcript. There was a lot of good information that the American people should know about. It should be a transparent uh, and an open process, and it certainly has not been so far. Kevin Harley. Let's talk uh, your district. Sure. Uh, big agriculture district, one of the biggest in the country. And uh, there's a the USMC is, is being debated, mm -hmm. and I think you've got the votes for it in both the House and the Senate if it, if it were to be brought up for a vote. But because of Nancy Pelosi's hatred of Donald Trump and not allowing anything to give the president credit in his reelection, do you think, that's my opinion, I'm just interested to see what, uh, what, what you think about UMC, USMC and, and moving forward. Yeah, so there, there's absolutely no question that things have ground to a halt. Basically nothing is being talked about uh, in Congress as a result of the impeachment. It's taken all the oxygen out of the room. And we have some great things that we should be doing. USMCA is, is uh, very important to my district and will aid if we're able to pass that it's going to give the president more leverage in negotiating with china and other countries uh... but there's a lot of jobs in my district that are dependent on us passing that uh, trade agreement which will be greatly improved over nafta um, and 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 uh, it, it, we do have the support on the floor there's there's no question in my mind that if uh, that were brought to the floor today we it would pass but for one reason or another the speakers and not to do that, is and now nobody's though? talking about it. Is it the impeachment inquiry getting in the way? Well, it's certainly taking all, you know, that's all everybody is talking about, so I've heard no discussion about impeachment. We're, we have a lot of great ideas on workforce development, higher ed reauthorization, attacking student debt, uh, doing prescription drug pricing, uh, you know, bringing those costs down. None of those things are really being talked about anymore right now. Well, it, it, not to continue to be argumentative, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really unfair to say that the impeachment procedure is uh, taking all the wind out of everything else. There are 400 pieces of legislation that have been passed by your house that are sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk. So, I mean, don't, don't ascribe blame to Nancy Pelosi being the stubborn one if 
Mitch is the undertaker for all of these initiatives. That's a, that's a, that's a very good point, and, and I can uh, pound the Senate as well for a lot of good bills, particularly in last session that uh, we moved over there that I would love to have seen passed. But the fact of the matter is USMCA is sitting right now ready to go in our chamber. The higher ed reauthorization, which will have a huge impact for students uh, in my district and across the state, is, is something that we could be moving out of the Ed and Labor Committee on which I sit uh, in Congress. So there are certainly things that should be advancing to help the American people that are not. I'm interested in this Volcker transcript of, of the testimony. Now, have you seen that and you just want the American people to see it or are you not seeing that either? No, I've not seen it. It is so available. you haven't seen that right. nine hours of right. testimony. Kevin. Well, just back to Mark's point, um, you know, and, and I was talking to one of your uh, Republican colleagues in another district and he was very frustrated. He said, to your point, we have all these great initiatives, trade agreement, prescription drug, but Nancy Pelosi will not let anything go through where the president could get any credit for his reelection campaign. So the point that I am making is that Nancy Pelosi is putting her hatred for Trump ahead of the best interests of the country. Hey, hatred's a little strong there, Kevin. I, oh, this it, is politics. I mean, they do control the House. Politics let, plays let a role. The in the didn't answer the uh, Pelosi tried to put off this for as, as yeah. long as the she question was to the Congressman. Well, you know, there are you know, another another uh, issue is immigration. There are there are there's a lot of agreement on immigration, but it has become so politicized. And in that case, I can assure you, it is all about not giving the president a win. Okay. And, and that, that unfortunately has entered into um, a, a, a lot of our discussions it, and is a barrier to finding solutions. So, you know, you can call it hatred, you can call it whatever, but it is about not giving the president a win. Kevin. Well, I, I agree with the congressman. I think it's just very, th this is an entire politicized atmosphere like we've never seen, I think, in, 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 in my lifetime for sure that uh, they will do everything in their power to block the president. This is all about re-election and, and not getting things done for the American people. Well, we can sit and argue that all day long. I will say this, that uh, as a proponent of civility and putting aside differences, uh, there are things that could be worked out. I'm sure the trade agreement could be. I'm sure the an infrastructure bill could pass. I'm sure that you know you can do some environmental technology things that you want to do. Right. So I, I I give you that. I think that we ought to lay the guns down and do two things at once: proceed with the impeachment inquiry, but do our jobs on the other stuff as well. I'm part of a group called the Problem Solvers. There's there you go. 40, yeah. 48 members, equal Democrats and Republicans. I'm probably the most conservative member of the group, but we all believe we have to come together, try to understand other points of view, understand different districts, uh, and then try to find solutions, f areas where we can agree to move the country in the right direction. We just recently, for instance, on immigration, uh, I co-led a uh, group of 16 members, Republicans and Democrats, to go to the border to see firsthand what was coming. I did that with uh, Dean Phillips, who's a Democrat from Minnesota. And you know, we now are sitting and talking. We've saw firsthand, and there's a lot more agreement in that group than there is disagreement. We're trying to find areas with the, to, to solve the crisis that we see there um, and find areas of the you know, specific pieces of legislation that we could get past. i got to wrap us up for this block. Just a quick question. Do you feel that the impeachment issue will die? Do you feel the president will be impeached in the House but not in the Senate? Or do you believe eventually the Senate would change its mind? How do you, what do you think the outcome would be? Well, it's, of course, going to be up to uh -huh. the Democrats, up to the Speaker. They're on a fast track to do this without due process. I hope they come to their senses and really uh, to approach this in a different way. So in that way. case, it could just be passed in the House and just locked in the Senate. That would be it. Yes. All right. Thank you, Lloyd Smucker, for being our guest on Face of State. Appreciate it. Thank a lot you. of great insight into what's going on in D.C. We're back with the Keystone Commentary.